That was the intro theme for the great Gianna Sisters, and this is VGM 101, your excuse to listen to video game music without having to touch a pesky, unsanitary joystick, controller, or keyboard. Let me ask you this, have you ever played a rousing round of Super Mario Bros. on your NES and wished to control two great sisters instead of a couple mustachioed plumber siblings? Or how about licensed Sony characters battling it out in a no-holds-barred deathmatch scenario in lieu of Nintendo brand icons? If either of those are the case, I suggest you go buy some video games and play them, because this is a podcast. What we can showcase is some music, here, today, more specifically. We're here to play some tracks from games that unabashedly lift ideas, concepts, and or play styles from others. Or, in the case of those two aforementioned examples, rip off an IP completely. You wouldn't know it from the creatively moody soundtrack for the great Gihanna sisters, but this thing is almost a complete sprite swap of the original NES Mario Brothers game. The one we're taking a look at today was composed by Chris Hulsbeck for the Commodore 64, but this thing also saw an official release on the Amiga as well as other home computers at the time, with many musical conversions performed by Johan Hippel. Released in 1987 by Rainbow Arts, this German-developed Super Mario clone is so shameless a ripoff that I couldn't help but put it right up front in today's episode. It reminds me of the burgeoning eras of comedy and music, where artists would liberally, often literally, thief work from others wholesale. It was the Wild West in the 80s when it came to video game development in much the same way. The Great Gianna Sisters is no more than a below-average means for owners of the Commodore 64 to enjoy some Mario action. The score, however, is fantastic. It also doesn't suit the game at all with its almost haunting melodies, partly due to the inherent sound of the Commodore 64's MOS technology interface device. Which, if you've listened to past episodes of VGM 101, you know I'm quite fond of. But enough about me, Germans, and chips. Let's dive into some more music. Sticking with the great Gianna sisters, this is the title theme track on the Commodore 64.
next, we have Hellfire, a horizontal space shooter released for the arcades in 1989, and one that shares a lot of ship designs with Thundercross, a cabinet published by Konami a year prior, and one we covered in our recent Konami Arcade episode, though unlike Thundercross, Hellfire saw a couple of home ports, notably to the Sega Mega Drive. This one might be a bit of a stretch to some, but take note of the playable index finger-shaped ship, as well as the orb-like swarms of enemy fighters. It's uncanny.
that was Inside Drive from Hellfire's Mega Drive Genesis Home Port, followed by the arcade versions of that same track and Mystic Green, all written and composed by Tetsuya Yoimura. The PC Engine Super CD-ROM would later see a heavily altered version of that game, starring a new female protagonist and more orchestral soundtrack. Still performed by Yuimura under the title Hellfire S, here's Captain Lancer.
Captain Lancer from Hellfire S and The Graveyard, The Unfinished Swan, PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale by John King. Sticking with PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale, let's make things funky! <laughs> Arena.
two terrific tunes from PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale, released for the PS3 starting with Practice Arena and mixed into the game's credit sequence. I enjoy those two tracks in particular for their late 90s, early aughts, trip-hop, dance and house music sensibilities, all genres that I'm immensely interested in. There's a real breadth of musical styles on this soundtrack, fitting as it does have to represent a wide variety of characters, ranging from the light-hearted and fun Ratchet and Clank to the more cinematic likes of Uncharted. John King even found a way of incorporating the bombastic grandness of Kratos' adventure with the fun fighter. Here's Metropolis, God of War.
The God of War Metropolis stage theme from PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale, followed by a block of music written and composed by Gary Simon for the very God of War-inspired action game Dante's Inferno, a truly underappreciated title crafted by Dead Space's Visceral Games. With our feet firmly locked into the darker side of gaming, we have Lords of the Fallen, a rather middling Dark Souls clone before, you know, every modern release had to be one. This is a title I played through a few times while awaiting the release of a new From Software title, mostly out of desperation in a Dark Souls drought. With that being said, the game isn't very good. In a lot of ways, it is the generic store brand version of the genuine article. One thing that does stand above the rest is the excellent music, helmed by Norwegian composer Nut Avenstrup Huygen. Years after completing this subpar Souls ripoff, and I'm still listening to this excellent score.
Harkin's Journey, Epilogue, Winter's Kiss, Sacrifice, Lords of the Fallen. There's just something about that style of music that I'm infatuated with. It could be my love of Norwegian metal and its more folk-inspired elements, or the alluring sounds of an airy acoustic guitar being strummed. Either way, there's just something cold, personal, and overwhelmingly touching about that soundtrack. Completely unlike the game, which is vapid, bland, and practically devoid of any ingenuity or merit. <laughs> Yikes. Now that was harsh. And speaking of harsh, how about we contrast that beautiful orchestral work with some 8-bit chip tunes? Now that I've lulled everyone to sleep with beautiful acoustic guitars and the sweet, sweet sounds of choir singing, god damn, I love a good choir. But if you've listened to older episodes of VGM 101, you already know that. Another thing I love is the Castlevania series, particularly the classic games. Being the success it was back in the day, it clearly had to have some pretty close clone games. None as blatant as Master of Darkness for the Sega Master System. For a visual aid, check out our full playthrough of it on YouTube under Prolfeed 101, where you'll no doubt grow tired of hearing this excellent tune by Fumi Kumatani, Thames River, Master of Darkness.
An excellent soundtrack for a pretty great game. That was Thames River, followed by Laboratory, Master of Disguise. I mean, Darkness, Master of Darkness, Turtle. My biggest complaint with the game is that the Thames River theme is overplayed in the first half of the adventure, proving that there's such a thing as getting too much of a good thing. That was Epitaph, Master of Darkness, Fumi Kumatani. Behind me, another game that borrowed a bit from Castlevania, Eight Eyes, with an eclectic soundtrack composed by Kenzu Kumi. We won't be diving any deeper into it today, as I find the music to be a bit shrill. I think it's a pretty good attempt, but the monotonous high notes that make up the majority of its soundtrack aren't particularly pleasant to listen to, at least on their own. Moving on to another popular franchise that got its start on the Nintendo Entertainment System, we have some games that were obviously inspired by Mega Man. First, we have the Creon Conquest on the NES, composed by Kiyoshi Yokoyama and Masaki Kasi. Thank you. 
Intro Part 1, Round 4, from the Creon Conquest, and now it's not Mega Man, it's Shockman! If you're anything like me, that catchy melody will be stuck in your head for weeks. Uh, shock, man. Koji Hayama with Shockman, the stage one theme. I'm not even going to try to bother pronouncing the actual title of that piece. And Zero, because the folks over at Winsco and NCS aren't even trying to hide it. I've played a lot of this game, with some of it being up again on YouTube under Profeed 101. The music is phenomenally well done. The game itself looks great, colorful sprites, terrific backgrounds, but it's just too damned hard for its own good. I got stuck on this, the second stage, for ages, with the only thing keeping me coming back being this awesome track. My favorite from the game, Starlight Magic.
bit of a Back to the Future vibe on that last one. From the top, Starlight Magic from Shockman, as it is known on the TurboGrafx-16, or Kaizo Chunin Shubabinman 2 for the PC Engine. That's a mouthful. After we heard rounds 4-2 and 4-1 from Cheeky Cheeky Boys, a PC Engine exclusive, which is actually a conversion of a Capcom arcade title. Of the coin-up Mega Drive and PC Engine versions, I find the latter to have the best music overall, as it has a wider breadth of tones compared to that of the tinny arcade sounds or the more bass-heavy Sega Home console variant. And speaking of Sega, its 16-bit mascot wasn't devoid of its fair share of imitators, while some would consider Bubsy or the woefully not awesome, Awesome Possum, to be Sonic the Hedgehog copycats, I opted here today to showcase Socket, Vic Takai's creation that plays terribly and borrows heavily from the Speedy Sonic playbook. Here's Emerald Forest, I mean, even this track title seems stripped from the Sonic lexicon. Socket, Time Dominator First, composed by Fumito Tamayama, Yoko Suzuki, Shigenori Matsuko. Some very familiar names there, and a very familiar sounding title here. This is Emerald Forest. Just listen to this drum beat introducing Future.
These next two titles, as well as show opener The Great Gianna Sisters, would all see some time in court for borrowing a little too much from other games. Here's Ryoko from Fighters History, kicking off this next block, seemingly composed by Seiichi Hamada for the Super Nintendo.
From Fighters History, that was Ryoko, Marstorius, and Rei. The game was probably the most egregious example of borrowing from Capcom's Street Fighter II's success with its similarly designed fighters, cutscenes, and themes, though it was far from the only title to do so. Still, Data East would win their legal battle with Capcom by arguing that the first Street Fighter itself had been based heavily on their own Karate Champ game. This next release would see an out-of-court settlement between Sega, EA, and Fox over The Simpsons' Road Rage, a game that very liberally borrows its core gameplay and style from Sega's Crazy Taxi franchise. With musical guest, Mark Beryl.
From the game I accidentally left in a GameCube I traded years ago, probably for some sweet, sweet smack and a hand job, that was Sunday Drive and Mission 5, composed by Mark Barrill from The Simpsons Road Rage. Let's travel back in time to the sultry 16-bit sounds of the Amiga. This is the main theme from Sword and the Rose, a blatant ghouls and ghost imitator that not only looks and plays like that game, but also sounds like it with a dash of Castlevania riffage to boot.
And there you have it, a heaping handful of games that imitated others, to varying degrees of outright plagiarism. This has been VGM 101. Tune in next time, where we will hunker down to look at one series of games that has had an enormous impact on the industry as a whole, and as such, quite a few titles that borrowed from it. Also, a special guest or two will join in to offer their voices and opinions. Be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram for updates and take a look at our YouTube page for more video game content, including reviews, let's plays, and other gaming garbage, all under Pearl Feed 101. As usual, this last music track is both relevant to this episode's theme as well as being a clue to what's in store next time. Contact us over at Pearl Feed 101 with your guesses and maybe win something fun, exciting, or exciting and fun.